Hey everyone! I wanted to put together a video to show off my new design. I call it the Super Surter V1. I was working on a, another project and as it often happens one project will lead into another one and I had a need to press some brass threaded inserts into a 3D printed part that I made and I didn't have a press and I could have gotten away without one but I thought it would be fun to make one and it would probably be useful in the future. And so I looked online and I couldn't really find a press that I was interested in primarily because all the presses that I found that were available to 3D print had some number of off-the-shelf parts that had to be purchased whether it was linear rails or hardware or bearings or whatever. And I thought it should exist a 100% 3D printable press and so I set out to design my own and this is what I came up with. This is my multicolored prototype and it works really nicely as you can see by these threads pressed into this part. And this one is actually sitting on the optional Gridfinity base. Whereas the standard base looks more like this and has optional TPU rubber feet just to keep it a little bit more gripped to the table. Also, if you don't have a multicolor setup or you don't care about the contrast for the target, it's available also in a sort of shadow target. It's just one layer offset, just enough to be able to see it, but it prints fine and it doesn't require any color changes. The other great thing about this is that it is 100% 3D printable. It is printable on a single build sheet of the Carbon X1C printer. And personally, I don't like designs that require supports. I just prefer not to use them. So I designed every component of this press to be able to be 3D printed without having the need for any supports. The only caveat to that is there are a couple of small pieces back here that need a small brim just to keep them in place, but otherwise it's ready to assemble without any cleaning right off the table. Just to go through some of the components, this is a single build sheet. I decided to print the handle in two pieces laying down to take advantage of the layer strength in this direction. Also, if I tried to print the handle straight up like this, it would probably fail more times than not because it's such a thin and tall part. So this just seemed to work better functionally. It seemed to work better as far as the print is concerned. And it also prints faster this way. And I've had no problems with that orientation. The other cool thing about this design is on the back of the tower, I put an integrated cord management so that when you have the whole unit assembled, you can tuck the cord in nicely and just keep it from, keep this part on the top kind of consistent and not pulling behind wherever it's plugged in. And then also if you use this particular soldering iron, it's only 10 bucks, link in the description. It has a really nice on off button right on the front. You can leave it plugged in and just kind of have this set up ready to go and not have any worry about cords or soldering iron that is being left on. And then if you choose the Gridfinity base, you will need to use the optional low profile tower nut, which is also included in the files linked in the description below. And then you can utilize some Gridfinity storage solutions to store the threaded inserts or the various sized insert soldering iron tips. To go over the assembly procedure, start with the tower and then take the gear piece. There is a tapered side that matches a taper in one side of the tower. Insert the gear piece into the tower so that the tapers line up and then we can put that down. The next step is to take the two handle pieces. I designed these with some pins that need to be inserted and they are offset from each other depending on which end you're coming from. 
And the reason I did that is so that the threads are guaranteed to be lined up and they don't get flipped and then for some reason don't work. And it also provides a little extra strength in the part. So take these two pins, drop them into the corresponding holes, press the handle together. Then one of the end caps can be screwed on. If you decide to print out the optional TPU handle stop, one of them can be installed now. Slide the handle through the gear piece. Install the second TPU handle stop. And then finally, the other handle end. At this point, take the ram and install it from the bottom, rotating the gear piece to pull it up. Once the ram is installed, the shape of all of these components, keep them all fixed and rigid in place, and so no extra hardware or anything is necessary. At this point, if you were installing a soldering iron, and this bore comes in two, or this ram piece comes in two options. There's a small bore size, which fits this soldering iron I linked in the description perfectly. There's also two shims for this size in case you're using a thinner soldering iron. There's also a optional ram with a larger bore in case you're using a larger soldering iron. And finally, the larger bore has three optional TPU shims so you can size it down. And hopefully between all of that, it covers most of the soldering irons that everyone is using. You want to thread the cord of the soldering iron into this slot first, and then push the soldering iron up from the bottom. Once the soldering iron is in place, take the ram bolt, insert it, and tighten it down. This will squeeze the soldering iron and hold it in place. Once the soldering iron is installed, the last piece is to take the base, line up the holes on the bottom of the base, take the base bolt, and thread that into place, and tighten it down. Once it's tightened down, the assembly is completed, unless you also decide to print out the optional TPU feet, just to give it a little bit better grip on the surface. And now this press is complete. Additionally, I included an optional ram stop. This is just a clamp that slides on the ram and tightens in place and gives a, a little bit of a physical stop to the depth of the insert just so you don't go all the way through the part or too far. It doesn't grab super super tight so if you use a lot of force it will slip but it does give you a very positive and hopefully repeatable stop position. There's also an optional shorter tower if you want to use less filament and you do much more small parts more often you can use the shorter tower and then finally, there's a little recessed area up here just to put the, your threaded inserts while you're in the middle of working and they won't roll off the top. If you decide not to use the optional gridfinity base, if you decide to use the optional gridfinity base, then you will need the optional low profile tower bolt just to clear the base and all of those things are all of those different options are included in the files that I linked in the description, including a couple of base grids and a one by one by seven unit tall gridfinity bin and a two by one by seven unit tall gridfinity bin just to have them ready to go. So all you have to do is hit print, but again. Those are op all optional pieces and are on different build plates. The main build plate includes everything to make this standard press, 
except for the clamp that's optional and except for the TPU components. Those are included on different build plates and are optional if you want to use them. As I said, I used this press on this piece and it, it worked perfectly. I'm thrilled at how well it worked. It's fairly rigid. The target on the bottom gives you a pretty good indication of where you need to line up the part in order for the soldering iron to hit it perfectly. And I think that's about it for the explanation of this whole uh, super starter. This is again V1. There may or may not be future iterations, but I think this one's a really good start. I'll do a quick demo of it actually pressing these threaded inserts into this part. Stay tuned if you want to see what this part is for. And thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check the description for the links for the files for this, and as well as the link for this soldering iron and also these different tips that I, I picked out um, to use. Comment below with any suggestions, and uh, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It looks like it is in degrees Celsius, so I'm going to... It's set to 350 degrees Celsius, which is probably a little too hot. I'm going to drop it down to about 200 degrees Celsius. Maybe I'll do 190. And I already have the correct size tip for this quarter 20 insert installed in the soldering iron. And this is the part that I'm going to be installing some of these inserts. So I can put it, because of the target on the bottom, I know exactly where the soldering iron is going to try to land. So I'm going to put my part and line that up. Put the insert in place and let's see if we can get it inserted. So at this point I'm just applying a little bit of pressure and waiting for the insert itself to heat up. And maybe I'll increase the temperature to 216. Well, maybe I went too far per my design, or something happened. Uh, unrelated to the press. The press actually worked really great. I just have some extra material built up in there that it looks like I need to somehow clear out. But let me do another one and get a close-up of this one. So here we go. Again, this is the target. Put my part down and my insert where I want it to go. And then I can just use the press to gently guide it in. And that one actually looks much better. I think I pushed this one down too far. I think I was expecting a little bit more resistance on my design than I got. But that's okay. I think six are overkill anyway. So if it works out that I can use that, then that would be really nice. If it doesn't, then that's fine too. And just to check, this is a test piece and it threads in really nicely. I decided to put the inserts on this part in from the back just so if they were going to end up potentially pulling out 
it would be a lot harder for them to pull out of the small side of the hole rather than the big side. This is also my first time doing threaded inserts, so I really don't know if that's much of an issue or not. But I figured it was easy enough to design it that way, and better safe than sorry. So, yeah, I think at this point, this thing seems to do exactly what it needed to do, exactly the way that I needed it to do it.